Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Happiest Hour on Earth. It's been a while. Last week we were in Disneyland, had the time of our lives, had so much fun, but we are back tonight. And I know our last episode was, you know, about our upcoming trip, but um, there were a lot of things that we wanted to talk about post-trip, uh, just because we experienced Universal for the first time together. Um, there were, you know, character meet and greets that were back and that we didn't get to experience during our last trip. There were a lot of things that happened um, that we just need to talk about. And then next week, we'll jump into some Halloween episodes, but we're really, really excited to talk tonight about just the pros and cons of both parks that we experienced, the highlights of our trip, and all that good stuff. So with that, I think we're ready to jump into our episode. So let's go get things started. All right, so before we get started on our recap of our trip, uh, we did make a drink for tonight, and it was a drink that Chris actually tried from Trader Sam's that we've never tried before. It was a new yeah. drink for us. It's called the Halakahiki, and it was delicious. We no. both loved it. I got to try his, and we just decided it had to be our first drink to make back at home once we got the show rolling again. So we decided yeah. to make it tonight. Um, kind of had to guesstimate a little bit on the ratios. We knew the exact ingredients from the menu, but we kind of winged it a little bit, but we found some other drinks with ratios that had similar ingredients in it. So we just kind of went off of that. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. We'll yeah. see if it holds true to the one that we had at Trader Sam's because that one was so it's good. It's so hard when they don't actually list out or like someone yeah. doesn't do the recipes because we just have to kind of just have to figure it out, it out yourself. Let's, let's give it a go. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> we both did both the same mm. thing. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's that's really good. It's um, The thing I liked about this drink is because right before I had the Krakatoa, which is one of my favorite drinks. Mm -hmm. um, it is a little more sweet, but I was looking for something that wasn't as sweet, was still tropical, but kind of was a little more balanced. And that's what I got with the uh, Halakahiki. Yeah. And I, I so it does, it. this does taste a lot like it. There's maybe a little slight variation yeah, that they slightly. did. But I mean, not really. I mean, it, it is it's really, close. really good. It's very close. Yeah. So. It's very close. It's hard because one of the ingredients is like a honey syrup and yeah. you can buy that yourself. Like you can buy a pre-made syrup that's like honey flavored, but we just mm. didn't do that. We just made our own with basically sugar and water and honey on the yeah. stove. And so it's kind of hard to like make sure that that ratio is all correct. And then how much of that also goes into it to like add that honey sweetness yeah uh but i think it's pretty close it's I good think it's, yeah it's, it's a really good it good reminds drink. me of like a um a classy tropical drink where yeah it has a little bit of bitters in there it's um it's very smooth and it's not too mm. i don't know it's it just good. kind of like balances it out yeah. really good so pineapple definitely, rum which is yeah. really good um i love rum based drinks i've mentioned that many times on the show so this is so this is going to be kind of a new favorite from Trader yeah. Sam's, I think. It's oh, a really yeah. good one. I tried a couple so of new ones as well. Actually, yeah. Well, I tried the Hippopotami oh, Thai, yeah. which yeah. I don't know how I never tried before because I love my Thai. I think I've gotten that before. You might have had a sip of it before, but yeah. Maybe. It's been a while if I did, so I couldn't remember. So I decided to try it. And it was That's delicious, sweet. as all my Thais are. And then I got one other one, which maybe we'll try and make at yeah. some point as well. That one was pretty good, too. The so, Angelata. Yeah, yeah, the Angelata. So it's, it's like a pink kind of coconutty. I don't know. It was really good. But anyways, this one turned out really good. Yeah. I'm proud. I'm proud of it. I think it was pretty, pretty true to the original. Yeah. And there's a lot of drinks and snacks that we tried for the first time in the Disney parks. And mm -hmm. so uh, really excited to make those yeah. coming up in the next couple of weeks. I agree. Really and on that note, we might as well just kind of jump into our first night down in anaheim yeah, at disney because yeah. that was kind of our first initial night evening yeah. in the in the park kind of we came from la yeah let's um, actually let's do a recap of that before we even get to um 
Trade Sands because I mean that yeah. is that was the first night and it was so much and it's definitely like so much fun and it was our highlight of that. But just a quick recap: we um we got down to LA, hung out with my sister uh and my my parents. Um, had a great time just kind of chilling in that area. We stayed at a hotel close to Universal, mm -hmm. but the uh first yeah it was the first day, the first full day. We went to the Peterson Automotive uh museum mm -hmm. our son loves cars and my dad has a uh has a really nice uh mustang. shelby yeah. mustang um and so that was really cool to see that in la but then monday uh, our second day we did a full day in universal mm -hmm. um i hadn't gone since i was a kid i only went once emily has never gone and we'll talk more about universal in yeah. a little bit but after universal uh we drove down to disneyland and uh before we did Disneyland, which was that next day, we decided to just settle into the hotel, but then also go to downtown Disney. Yeah. So once we were in downtown Disney, we knew we had to hit up, um, not Lamplight Lounge. Um, we knew we had to hit up, for some reason, it's not even on here, but um, <laughs> Trader Sam's. We just did the walk up menu or walk up uh, line. Line. Cute. And we got in probably like 15 20 minutes we, we walked around the area it took a few minutes um for them after we like checked in we had to wait for them to like call our name which meant i guess then the table was officially ready yeah so we kind of walked around the hotel and saw some things that i like had never seen i don't know why we've never just like walked around the disneyland hotel yeah. even and though we, we stayed, stayed there, there yeah, once we yeah just... <laughs> there were just certain areas we had never really seen before and so it was really fun to just kind of wander around while we waited for our table yeah such a beautiful hotel I all of it. the landscaping and just the atmosphere is just perfect i love the different towers that are it's the different beautiful lands. Yeah. yeah and they're yeah. doing some construction on the new tower that's coming so that be was a little noisy. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it was a little noisy while we were there. So anyone that's staying currently is probably hearing a lot of that. But regardless, beautiful hotel. Yeah. I would love to stay again at some point. But yeah, it was it was really pretty quick getting into Trader Sam's. Yeah. Um, kind of cool that you don't have to do the whole like official reservation yeah. thing, like walk up worked out pretty well yeah in that instance and yeah we got seated it wasn't busy at all there was a couple people yeah around us not super close and it was just such a good like <laughs> start to our trip like both of us were just like we settled down got our son's tablet out which we don't normally we do don't normally we don't do, yeah. normally just let him watch shows when we're you know just out and about, but on trips, it's like, you know what? We want to relax a little bit. We're just going to let him hang out. That'll keep him calm. So, so he's watching some Lilo and Stitch, which kind of went with the overall yeah, yeah. theme of where we were. And we just got to relax and have our drinks and food. And it was just like the best start to our Disney trip. First time I think getting food at uh, Trader mm -hmm. Sam's. Loved it. We got the, so uh, the we got the poo poo platter. The poo poo platter. Poo -poo platter. We did. Um, it did not. <laughs> <laughs> um it had tastier things than that um delicious yeah the gyoza we had the uh, uh fried long beans yeah oh my gosh the, so um, good mac know, salad the mac salad the uh uh the like chicken wings uh, yeah which were really good with that uh oh, island great. um dressing on there mm -hmm. um and then we got a salad so we split a salad that was really really good as well i can't recall what it was called at the moment but yeah Good, good bites to Trader Love Sam's. Just overall, Trader Sam's is the best. We had a great cast member, uh, yeah. bartender slash waitress as well. She was amazing, um, super attentive and friendly and just the best experience. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. Trader Sam's is my favorite. So great start to the trip. Great then we start. went and walked around downtown Disney a little bit. Didn't do a whole lot. We hadn't checked into the hotel at that point. We were yeah. still kind of waiting because it wasn't our time yet to check in. So we wandered around, went in some stores, and then headed out to the hotel so we could check in because we knew that we wanted to spend a little bit of time at the hotel that night. We knew we wouldn't be doing that a whole lot the rest of the trip. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we stayed at Hotel Lulu, which is a really, really cute hotel. If you haven't seen it, I believe yeah. it's fairly new i don't know how new maybe a couple years yeah probably. we only noticed it on our previous trip which was in april um it's on harbor 
uh, close to the rest of the hotels. Quick walk, um, yeah, 10 minute quick. walk. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, we walked into the park both days. It's really not that bad of a walk. Really cute hotel. We, we have some some general observations about it. It was fun. Did, do you want to yeah, so, jump in at all? Yeah, we loved it. I mean, like the lobby, super, super so cute. So cute. Um, really cool stuff in there. Uh, once you get to the actual like floor levels of the rooms, your kind of standard hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, rooms were were nice it was a little bit cramped but we also had our um our son's uh all pack of and play, his things all of his stuff <laughs> so i think normally it wouldn't really feel like that um loved the fact that there was a because one of our highlights or I, I guess not like the highlights of the whole trip but of the hotel is that um we went out by the pool and you could order food and they bring it right out to you so we had some fun like just having some drinks and some food by the pool. They have fire pits there, they which were really, really nice. Yeah, gave us complimentary cocktails. Yes, the check-in was process cool. was great. Super oh easy check-in, and because we were 21 or over, we each got a little complimentary cocktail, which was very nice. Very, um, very nice. And then our son got a little cookie. Um, which oh, was yeah. Fun. Yeah, he yeah. did. It was just kind of a sweet gesture. Like you really, don't really yeah. expect that at hotels generally, so that was nice. Um mm. Very, very nice, easy check-in. We, yeah, we got into our rooms and it was kind of getting late at this point. So we got changed and went down to the pool. And in the process, we met some other people in the elevator and they were like, beware, the pool isn't heated. And we're like, oh, okay. Because it wasn't super hot out at this point. It was kind of cooling off. We're like, all right. And so we went out there and it was quite chilly so we didn't go did not really we kind of like sat at the steps and just waited a little bit but it was nice to just be outside and sit by the pool it was just a really nice ambiance out there they had they everyone's super nice the bartender that we got the drinks and the food from super nice and there was like barely anyone outside it was just like us and maybe one or two other people they had ping pong ping pong and cornhole yeah yeah cornhole a little fire pit nice seating area it's really well done outside we loved that part of it for sure and yeah honestly some of the biggest highlights for me staying there was having the little coffee shop or just kind of cafe area and restaurant attached to the hotels just right downstairs which made it so easy in the morning he would run downstairs get us both coffee and a muffin to kind of start out the day and we did eat you know i think we had dinner two two different night or one yeah dinner one, day, one and night then breakfast the breakfast day we're on leaving. our last yeah. day exactly yeah. so yeah really good food everybody that worked there was so nice it was yeah. a really good experience um we did come from a crazy nice hotel in universal yeah so um i think our expectations were super like up here so there were a few things um there were a few things in the hotel, like in the room that, you know, could use just like a little more a attention, maybe. I mean, they yeah. were fine. One of my like bath towels was a little bit. Could have could have been a little cleaner, <laughs> I would say. Uh, there's just like little details like that. Or like, the other ones were fine. Yeah, yeah all the rest yeah. of them were OK. There was just one that I was like, oh, it's, I'm going to use a different one. Uh, but <laughs> but overall, I mean, it was it was a good experience. I think we both kind of just said like. We've stayed in nicer hotels and we've stayed in worse hotels. It was just yeah. like, it was nice. Yeah, overall, we really had a nice day at Hotel Lulu. I yeah. liked it a lot. I'm glad that we finally got to check it out because I'd been excited about staying there for a while since we had seen it on our last trip. So yeah. Another highlight was just during our trip, there were a couple of rides that we rode for the first time with our son, mm-hmm. which was really, really great. So we did Autopia. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to drive him around in the car. He loves cars so much. So that was really, really so exciting special. and so fun. We did the teacups for the first time with him. Mm-hmm. Um, we did uh, Major's Junkyard Jamboree with him, which was really fun. Crazy. Crazy. I did not yeah. know how much that ride like slings you. Slings, I yeah. had not ridden it before. Yeah, think. that was our first time too. Yeah, and it was crazy. crazy. We we sat all three of us in one, and man, I was like thrown around. It was crazy. It, it it's intense. Um, what other ones besides the the big one for the um, first time? Uh, I think those were most of the main ones that we did for the first time with yeah. him. 
think you hit all those because we did obviously Small World and the Railroad and the Carousel and a lot of the Dumbo, like Dumbo, a lot yeah, of the yeah. kid favorites. This this trip was definitely very kid ride heavy. Oh, for sure. <laughs> like we, for sure. we didn't do many of our classic favorites. We did a few and of them. And we're going to get into why we didn't yeah. in a little bit of a con list that we have for Disneyland. Yeah. Um, surely. Yes. Surely. Yeah, but uh, before we jump into some of that stuff, yeah. our son's favorite ride so cute. was Golden Zephyr in California Adventure. And overlooked attraction that like hardly anyone goes on. Yeah, we rarely. We rarely go on that. I think I've been on it like once before, but we were like walking around our first day and we we're like, oh, you want to check that one out? And he was like, yeah, because it looked like it was flying and stuff. Yeah. And he loved it. They went on it twice in a row. And then the next day went on it again. It was definitely a he favorite. Loved it. He kept talking about it, and it was the cutest thing ever. That so this like sweet. one little tiny ride that no one goes on. Um, it was a favorite. And he loved it so much. And I was just, it was just fun talking about that. And like we could talk today. I'll be like, hey, what was your favorite ride? And he'll like do the sounds and like mm-hmm. spin his hand around, and it's so cute. It was um, very, very sweet and special. Another thing that's so sweet, too, is that, like, we could ask him, maybe maybe other kids would realize this, too, but I, th- I think for some reason it was just so surprising to me because of his age right now, but I was like, oh, what car did we ride in on Autopia? And he'll tell us the color uh, car, yeah. and then for the teacups, I was like, what color teacup did we have? And he just remembers it because we just, like, had a fun time just yeah. trying to get his favorite colors on, on those rides. He but, remembers um, those details so really special. well, and it's so so fun to me like we always talk about how a lot of people will be like why bother taking your kid to disneyland like before they're older and they'll like remember it and like really have a fun time and it's like we have all these super special memories from him being two years yeah. old and i know like maybe he won't remember every detail but we will and i know that he had such a fun time on this trip so that's worth it to me like yeah. that was so worth it we had a blast Oh, so much fun. It was such a fun trip. So I really, I really think that you can choose for yourself when it's a good time to bring your kid to Disney. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Just whatever. So, Uh, yeah, yeah, there was a a lot of special things about this trip for us. Definitely getting to meet Mickey was huge. Took quite a while to get to that point. It was one of the last things on the trip that finally happened. I was like, we're not leaving until we go see mickey and get a picture with them so it finally happened that was very special um also getting to see world of color again which we were talking about on our last episode we were hoping we'd be able to do that and we did so it was really really special getting to see it again after probably five years for me at this point um it was so so good to see it again in all its glory and our son Stayed awake for it. He was wiped Way out. Past the <laughs> yeah. Way past the he fell asleep on the walk home back, or back to the hotel. He was wiped out, but he got to see it, which was so special. His first real show in the parks. Oh, yeah. He hadn't yeah. seen any of the other ones. So it was it was a moment for sure. So glad he stayed awake for it. Yeah, it was yeah. very special. Yeah. Oh, and then uh last highlight that we had here was our lamplight lounge uh, mm-hmm. dinner. Oh my gosh. The food was so good. Guys, if it you was, want some good food and drinks in Disneyland, Lamplight Lounge, come on. It's so amazing. I had an Al Pastor pork chop that was unlike anything else. It was um, delicious. Awesome. Like, it was on a bed of almost, I feel like, oh, oh I think it was, it was polenta, a polenta. Right? It was a polenta. Mm-hmm. And then um, some green stuff that was Something so good green. chimichurri i don't know for sure that's <laughs> only green sauce i know um but incredible so good uh new drink that yeah i had was the um nectar and the rye nectar and the rye really really good mm-hmm. um really good drink. yeah amazing uh also a shout out to felicia who follows us because she uh that's one of her favorite drinks when she goes to lamp play lounge so shout out felicia um <laughs> and then it, yeah, yeah. And i got i can't recall the drink i got P- oh oh 
I remember the, the food I got for sure. I can't remember the name of the drink I got, but it was really good as well. It was a new one. Oh, the teaser. The teaser. teaser. Yeah. That was yeah. the one I got. It was really, really good. So um, good. And the dinner was amazing. I did finally get something different from the lobster nachos. I get that every single time, but I was like, I have to branch out this time. And I got the uh, salmon sandwich. It's called like a PLT. PLT yeah. um, Where's the P come from? The pancetta, I'm assuming. Oh, pancetta. Where's the salmon PLT? I don't know why salmon isn't in there somewhere. Uh, oh, was it called the salmon PLT? I think so. Salmon. Pancetta so it was, yeah, salmon. it was like yeah. a grilled salmon sandwich with pancetta and like tomato and lettuce. And oh my gosh, it was so good. And it came with fries and it was, it was just mm. such a good experience. That was such a fun Lamplight Lounge experience. We had a great time. Also use the the cheat code of the uh, tablet. We uh, yeah. th those were well, only that, two those times. Were the yeah, two. We're like, and trying you know to keep him awake for World of Color. I was like, we're just gonna sit here uh, and watch yeah. shows <laughs> until the show's like a good number. It's like okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had to pull it out a couple times, and it was worth it. It helped very much. I love that trip. we have to justify. We're like, we're not. I know. Parents, like but nobody we probably cares. Kind of are <laughs> when it comes to it. Uh, it's fine. You need it time. sometimes. You do. Yeah. Um. So amazing times uh as part of the highlights we talked about meeting mickey we did meet a couple other characters mm -hmm. we met um jesse and bo peep which mm -hmm. are uh jesse is one of his favorite toy story characters yeah. um we also met mater, mater yeah. which was really really that funny was he was dressed one. as a vampire um yeah. yeah and then we also met we got him an autograph book so he, yeah it was so much fun um we also met stitch uh in like a special chase visa area which is always really fun um i say always but this was our it's first time our first time ever <laughs> which is really cool that you could do always i guess that's what i meant um and he we were trying to keep him awake because stitch is his favorite character and so we we're running over to that area and we we're like chance stay awake stay awake and he fell asleep and there was and, no way um, of keeping him up. I was yeah. trying so hard and he was just knocked out. And so Stitch I was like, is so funny with him. He is so, but we he got was... pictures of our son Chance in front of Stitch while Stitch was signing his autograph book. And then we all posed with the sleeping little boy yeah. in the photo. So, so it worked out, but it was such a bummer that I didn't get to meet him because he loves Stitch so much. Yeah. I was so sad. That. It was such a bummer, but hey, next, next time. time. Yeah. But this actually brings us into the Disneyland cons that we had mm -hmm. um, during this trip. So we're going to be talking as we compare Disneyland and Universal, um, Universal pros and the Universal cons. You already know that we love Disneyland so much. You already know about the pros of Disneyland, but we wanted to just quickly discuss the the cons that we experienced during this trip. Um, mm -hmm. and then as we go talk about universal, we're going to be doing a little bit of compare and contrast on how Disneyland differs. So, um, the first con that we had for Disneyland was that the character meet and greets. Oh, it's, it's, it's um, such a nightmare now in the app. You, you can see some characters are very specific while others are just like, we're going to be here sometime of around here. Mickey and, and all of the ones you really want to meet, they have no specific time now. It's yeah. like, they'll like at some point in the day, you'll check and it'll be like, oh, they'll be in this area, maybe between like 8 a.m. and 12 noon. Like, so you just yeah, have to like be really... prepared at any moment to go and then you'll probably miss them. And they're only out for like 15 minutes and then they're, yeah. and then they're like, and they close so the dude. line like that. As soon as a character comes out, you have like five minutes to get there and there's then the no, line closes. There's no way you're meeting Mickey then going over to Pluto in that yeah. same time. Like I feel like you used to be able to like have them all out there at once and like hit a few characters in that time. Nope. And it is not, not even anymore. possible now. It's crazy to me how much the whole character situation has changed. Yeah, and like the thing is, usually I feel like in in times past we would walk onto Main Street and we'd see, oh, there's Pluto, there's Goofy, there's yeah. Mickey. They're already At out there. Times we didn't the day. see Mickey until later our last day, and we were intentionally trying to meet Mickey. Yeah, but before it was like even in Buena Vista Street like, in California first thing Adventure. In the morning, oh my gosh, there's Mickey! Like he's always out there. Yeah. No, they're not always out there anymore. Even when it was COVID time or like just post COVID yeah, and you couldn't then. like officially meet them, 
they were still out there way more. Oh, yeah. Even if it was just to, like, see them and wave, you would just walk around and you would see characters more. I don't know why they have it the way it is now. Meeting characters is a huge part of so many people's trips, especially kids. Yeah. They want to see their favorite characters, and it is mind-boggling to me that they don't have, like, at least Mickey just rotating out all throughout the day. Oh Yeah, get a couple of people to be Mickey and just rotate them like, out. Like, maybe there's a break somewhere in the middle of the day, but oh, there yeah. should be a significant chunk of the day that there is always a Mickey out. We were afraid that our son wasn't going to be able to meet him. Like, that's, it's yeah. not rare. Yeah, it you was You have to intentionally so look in the app and then even then have no idea what he's going to And be go in a very specific area. Yeah. It used to be like a couple spots you could meet them, like his house. Yeah, still, I mean, granted. Yeah, like you can't do that now, yeah. I know. But like there should, they should like navigate that one to a different area, yeah. right? Well, they do have the um, near small world. He is over there. Um, so that is it one, but it feels like it's, just, it's, it feels it's so rare. Yeah. yeah, the characters definitely. We need more characters. I mean, if there's an explanation for this and someone knows why it is the way it is, please yeah, let us know because I'm very curious why the characters are so hard to see now. Yeah, we barely saw any. It was, it was tough. Um, but another oh yeah, thing into this. This that is we a were big one. We were very, very this bummed. like crushed our whole. Yeah, trip. This ruins a lot for us specifically as parents. Single rider is like no longer a thing for yeah. most of the rides. There's a few select There's ones. Like three or four in Disneyland, maybe five in California Adventure. But that's it. And that's it. That used to be like our mm. only way of doing it yeah. when we were like, I mean. Especially post having a kid. Yeah, post kid. I yeah. mean, we would we would utilize it before that, but especially after having a kid, we had to do it that way because we would always get the parent pass. Or even, I mean, we didn't even need the parent pass because we were just. But I we was used just going it a single lot. Rider. Yeah, and single rider was like the easier way to do that because yeah. you would just get the scan, and then the other person could go on right afterwards. It is. Such a bummer to me that they got rid of that. It made things so much easier. And yeah, there's only three at Disneyland. I just realized. Yeah, it was Smuggler's Run and Splash Mountain and then Matterhorn was closed. But before there was like Space Mountain, Indiana Jones. Yeah. Um, all the big rides that you would want to do. Yeah. And now and it's just no more with no explanation. They're just making things so much harder on people lately. Yeah. And so this is where we came into a lot of trouble is that we were thinking, okay, once he goes to sleep, I'll hit single rider up yeah, we'll and you go single rider. And then maybe we could do one more and bam, bam. Um, we didn't realize till that day and we didn't have genie plus that first day. So we were like, okay, I went up there and they said, Oh no, no more single rider. So it's like, I would have to wait, you know what? 45 minutes for space mountain. And then by the time I'm out, I would probably get parent pass, but by the time, like, chance, our son would probably be already awake. So it's like, I don't want to say it. And then, and then the bummer here is that second day we got Genie Plus. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you're paying money, but you're still, if you're a parent like us, we're paying to not even ride it together. You yeah. know, we're paying to go on it by ourselves and Which be is just not and, as fun you know. as an experience because we did it a few times the following day. And it was cool getting to ride the rides, obviously, but it's just not the same as like yeah, being like, with someone and getting to like be in the line because there is still a line for Genie Plus people. I had to wait in a few a bit, lines. Yeah, lines and then you're on the ride just by yourself. And it's like it's, so you're paying to be on it by yourself. Yeah, when you're thinking like, OK, if they wanted to do that, get rid of single rider for some rides. You should there should be an option like a single rider Genie Plus that's cheaper but you're not because the thing is, maybe that price would be worth it if me and you get to skip a couple, a little bit of the lines and we get to write it together. Yeah. But I'm paying to go on it by myself. And the thing is, is I can't just get one genie plus and then get a parent pass while I go on because they're like, oh, no, no, no. You got to skip the line. Like, so the other person has to have genie plus, too. So, yeah, it, it just makes it so much more complicated without the single rider. And that was a huge bummer. I knew like. From the moment they were like, oh, we don't have single rider anymore. I was like, well, our trip with the big rides is over. 
Yeah. Like there's nothing. We're just not gonna be able to I, do anything. It wasn't. Then. We did a few. We did a few, but it it was like messed up. Yeah. Yeah. We were not super fun. stoked about that. Finding that out on our first day there. I think you were trying to ride Space Mountain, and you yeah. were told no. You were just like, "What?" So no, I the sign. Yeah. It was so much easier before. I don't. I don't know yeah, why they had to bummer. do that. But what next? Yeah. Experience with Genie, Genie Plus. Plus. We kind of just touched on that a little bit um well now the price has increased yeah um we uh we were very much trying to hold off we did not want to do genie plus but we we're like okay we want to at least see what the experience is like so that we know how to gauge whether it's worth it or not and like if it helps and that kind of yeah. thing so we just decided to do it for our second day um i think we maybe got four maybe five rides maybe with not genie plus yes, probably, probably not even four. yeah yeah i can't recall soren that you got a ride but i couldn't ride because yeah because the line time. still took way too long yeah your line took a long time for soren yeah um i used it for web slingers no i went single ride on web slingers which they oh, had they and had i was it. in right. i was on there quicker than genie plus midway mania midway mania which was great we went yeah. on it instantly I don't know um, what else we used it for there. Uh, Thunder. Thunder Mountain. We yeah. rode separately. Uh, still had a little bit of a wait. I used it for Indiana Jones. Still about a 15 to 20 minute wait with Genie Plus. And I single road Radiator Springs. That's right. Yeah. So single rider, honestly, is faster than Genie Plus. Yeah. Um, it seriously is. I think that That's was it. one of the that only was... ones. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very minimal amount. There Granted, we, we would we have did, utilized we, it more if our son wasn't with us. It would have been easier yes. probably to hit more things. And we were just trying to fit stuff in for him mostly on this trip. So we did squeeze in a couple for ourselves. And we yeah. probably could have done more. We did have Autopia that we weren't able to use just because Dumbo line was taking so long. Oh, right. That's and right. And I wanted huh? to get on to Indian Jones. So um, it was... An experience. I just don't love it. I think that they could be doing it a lot better. And we will get into that especially, soon. Especially that you have to pay more for certain rides. Too. Yeah. You're paying twenty now you're gonna be irks me. I think twenty five for Genie Plus instead of twenty. And then Rise of the Resistance went up twenty five instead of twenty. Oh so that's fifty, so $50 dollars. dollars per person. Not even just uh two Oh, okay. Yeah. Although Rise of the Resistance is amazing, but I would just say rope drop that ish, and then, and then that's better yeah. than paying fifty bucks. <laughs> that's crazy to me. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? So uh, we can just go quickly. Yeah. Through. Yeah. Crowds were a lot, as is always the case. I mean, this isn't really new information for anyone, but it's just hard to grasp that there's just like no non-crowded time to go anymore because we always try to plan it to where we think maybe it won't be as bad i mean granted we're there it was halloween season, time i know but it april was, was a lot better very midweek yeah. you know um yeah tuesday early in october Thursday. so we were just hoping it would be like minimal literally haunted mansion was a three-hour wait at one point in the day that we were there that's insane I cannot comprehend a line getting to be that long. I can't imagine anyone waiting that long for a line yeah, really of any cool. kind. So the lines were just crazy. The crowds were a lot, as always. Um, not much you can do about that at this point. Yeah. It's just kind of Disneyland now. So Yeah. And then the other thing that we had here on the cons is that there's nowhere really to expand. Um, I only bring this up just because um the crowd marvel took over <laughs> yeah marvel took over bugs land so there's a lot of like taking over lands um while universal which we're going to be talking about next uh they're building out the super nintendo super mario super Something uh, super land um and i don't know if that was taken up by something previously or if they just had that room to expand and then they expanded but um disneyland's kind of constrained mm -hmm. by that but I mean, honestly, Disneyland is the best. So amazing. But because it was built so long ago, a lot of the walkways, you know, uh, get very bottlenecked and very, very tough to maneuver. And they can't just they like can't, yeah. expand those walkways. There's no way to do that at this point because there's something within that space. Yeah. It up. 
for sure. Um, but with that, we're going to jump into some pros and cons of Universal. Her first time there, my first time uh, as an adult. Yeah. And um, with these, we are going to be kind of like balancing. Kind know, of a what little bit Disneyland of Disney. has yeah. versus, yeah, kind of like comparing how one does something better or worse than the other. Yeah. But jump in? yeah, I, I was overall like, I had a better experience at Universal than I maybe initially thought I would. Not that I thought I was going to suck or something, but with Disneyland as like my favorite, obviously you have that expectation or, you know, that's just, that's the best to me. So going to Universal is kind of like, yeah, it's going to be fun, you know. I really enjoyed a lot of aspects about Universal, and that's part of what we're going to be talking about. But I think that there's a lot of things that they are doing right, for sure, that I was like, why isn't Disneyland doing stuff like this? Um, it was a really good experience. I really loved it. And, you know, I we don't generally go to, like, other theme parks. Like, Disneyland yeah. is kind of our place. And we've been to Six Flags, and we've been to Great America a few times, and they're always fun. Yeah, R.I.P. Great America is going away, which is really sad. That's the closest one to us. Very sad. Um, but yeah, always fun, but just kind of like a theme park, right? Universal felt like better than that to me. I would say yeah. much better than just like your average theme park with thrill rides. Like there's sure. more thought put into it. Especially with Harry Potter. Yeah, um, there's a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot of it is up there with Disney in terms of like the the cues and the rides themselves and just the theming and stuff. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed a lot of things about it. Um, I <laughs> actually, before we even jump in, uh, highlights of rides we did. Um, what was your oh. favorite? Yeah. Oh, of my you know. favorite that we did. My favorite was probably, I really enjoyed the Jurassic World ride, yeah. um, but also the tram tour. I mean, that the, was yeah, the, yeah, that was so great. That's, that's a favorite, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more later. Yeah. But it was Our, really fun. Yeah. Our son got to ride a few, and I forgot to actually mention this in our notes, but this was our first initial experience in Universal, yeah. which was... As we're jumping into a con. Here, yes, yeah. I was not going to jump into cons immediately, but there was something that started out our trip a little bit on and the we stressful like, oh side. Gosh, where I was like, is this how the day is going to go? And it was not so fun. But um, we were headed to our first ride of the day, which was the uh, Secret, Secret Life, Life of Pets, Pets, which is a really cute ride, by the way. Our son loved it once we finally got him on it. Uh, we started going on the ride and... They had to measure our son like three times, three times. Yeah. From the time that we were outside to once we were inside about to get on the ride. And he hates getting measured for some weird reason. It, like, he associates it with like the doctor because we always do it at the doctor and he hates it. He was like screaming Freaking and they out. were taking forever to decide whether or His not head he was, was tall enough. touching the little thing. And they were like, oh, like they looking were just at it standing from different there, angles. Like, it was like, dude. And then we were about to hop on, on cause they had finally cleared it. And then someone was like, can we just, can we check one more time? Can we just like right here? Like, and there was a separate one. And I was like, are you kidding? Nothing, I tried, nothing. I was like holding my son against ride. the wall so they could check as he was screaming and trying to get away. And they finally let us on. And then the guy was like, it just made it super difficult too. It just, it took forever to like get ourselves in the ride vehicle and going on the ride. Once we did, it was fine. Our son loved it. I was worried he was going to keep freaking out and screaming and making it hard. And he loved it. He was super calm and he really enjoyed the ride. So that was great once we got on. Yeah, um, it was, it was insane because the ride does nothing. Yeah. It's not it's a dark it's, ride. It's a dark ride. <laughs> and yet there's a height requirement, which is ridiculous. And I hated that experience of him getting measured so many times. So I took a picture of him on the ride and we rode it two more times after that. And people were like, Hey, we have to measure him. And I You're just like, showed here. him video. I just showed him photo proof. I was like, he went on it. He was good. We're not going to go through this again. <laughs> yeah. It was a nightmare. Um, so, but yeah, that was his favorite ride. Um, <laughs> crazy. Uh, wild. I was able to do the Harry Potter ride. Uh, Emily was a little nervous. She was going to get sick. I was a little nervous. I was going to get sick, but um, my mom and I did it. My mom was brave enough she to did, jump she on loved it. it. 
fun ride. Honestly, a ri- I haven't been on a ride system like that ever. And um, and yeah, it does kind of make you a little lightheaded. But honestly, I such a cool a experience time. because I have never been on a ride like that before. So props to the Harry Potter ride. Um, also love the mummy ride. And then obviously the Jurassic Park mm-hmm. uh, or Jurassic World ride is incredible. Yeah, that whole well. area so was really, really fun. fun. Really yeah, the impressive. Da- down the... Uh, four escalators yeah, to get to the so <laughs> many but it was fun our son loved going up and down the escalators yeah, yeah um fun. and getting to see blue the velociraptor yeah and then the little baby one that's out uh was amazing they were yeah. really really cool um animatronics i guess blue is an animatronic right yeah i think i don't know whatever it is yeah. very realistic super cool uh, our son loved them i thought he was gonna be scared of them and he, like, he wanted loved to them. go up so as to good, we yeah. concluded on this trip that he's gonna be kind of a thrill seeker after some of the experiences it was like i think he's into this yeah. i think he likes rides and some of the thrilling stuff so that was kind of fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> to realize yeah. and yeah so with that as we kick off the universal pros one thing that we had in our pros list was the express pass and um it is expensive uh 75 dollars um a day per person mm-hmm. and you know that's expensive um but my yeah. sister was like you you should just get it you'll love it especially if you're only doing one day and for one day i think it was worth it the cool thing about the express pass although it is more expensive than genie plus you right genie plus is now i guess 25 dollars. it was 20 um when we were down there uh, but the express pass, although it's more, you do not need to do reservations. Like you don't need to go into the app and be like, oh, I have to reserve something. And then, oh, I can't reserve something for another two hours. And so I'm maybe going to get four rides. The express pass, you get access, uh, pretty much front of mm-hmm. front of the line it was uh, so for easy. every single ride. So you get to do it once. So you can't like just keep reusing the express pass, but you go in with the peace of mind saying, Hey, whatever ride I want to go on, I'll I show them this, I'll get to ride it. Yeah. yeah. And that was really cool because it wasn't this like stressful, oh, I hope I could get this and then I have to wait two hours and then I have to get yeah. this. You just go in knowing, oh, I'll be able to ride all the rides that I want to do. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's you know. Very convenient. Every ride. Very and It's easy. so cool. Yeah. I, I loved uh, that. I mean, yes, it was a lot of money uh which you know we're always ragging on disney plus for or not disney plus sorry genie yeah. plus for the cost which i think is mainly because we're so used to fast pass which was always free which is always free so yeah, any th- any cost yeah. now seems like a lot but then you have you know 75 dollars for universal but overall it's like yeah sucks to pay that much but it does make it so much easier to just go in do all the rides you want to do without having to wait It was, it was so nice. I loved that. And I don't know why it is that Genie Plus can't offer that as an option. Maybe it was just, I think it's just crowd wise. Yeah. Lines are just longer in general. It makes standby worse. Yeah. But that's just kind of the downfall of Disneyland and how much people love Disneyland. Yeah. There's so many people there that is just, yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. That's true. So I don't really know what the solution is. I just know that. The experience at Universal was really nice. It was. <laughs> the Express. Yeah. Um, but another one, this is very random and a very minor thing, but something that I kept noticing all throughout Universal was there were misters, like like water misters, just randomly placed all throughout the park, which is such a small thing, but I was like, when it got hotter in the day, those little like bits of cool mist really helped to just like get us through and i was like why can't disney have things like that like it gets so so hot in disneyland some days like i mean there was 100 plus days this summer and how nice it would have been to just have some of those placed throughout the park i mean there was a ton of them in universal and it was super nice so. It was so nice. Yeah, and they were just like little wrapped around the trees or little wrapped around like little light poles. And I was like, man, it really kind of cools you down and makes you have a better experience. Sometimes in Disneyland, you're walking, what, like 20,000 miles? When there's 20,000 yeah. steps. Not 20,000 yeah. miles. Uh, <laughs> not 20,000 steps and you're like sweating and all this stuff. If there are certain areas of the park that have a few little misters attached to things, I think that would 
just make overall make for a better experience. I you think know? so too. Yeah. It's, it's such a small thing, but when there's no relief being outdoors in the park all day long, your only option is pretty much to be inside somewhere. It's just a bummer. It sucks. So it's nice to just, it was nice to have those little, little misters placed throughout the park for sure. So maybe, maybe Disneyland will get on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, another pro that was at Universal that I didn't really know too much about, but um, very exciting to see was that there were a lot of like playground type park things for the kids mm -hmm. um, with a lot of great seating for the parents to just take a load off while the kids played. And um, and I know, you know, those of you, the childless millennials who go to the parks um, which we were until yeah. just recently. Uh, you don't care about that. You just want all the fun rides and you're going for it, right? Um, but honestly, as a parent, that was very, very nice to see because mm -hmm. there were times that we just wanted kind of a little break, wanted him to get some energy out. There was two, two of those parks. Um, really, yeah, really cool. We utilized them um, both. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and yes, California Adventure does have the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail, which is great. It's like a supersized version of that, which is awesome. But there's nothing in Disneyland Park that gives kids the chance to run around and have some fun, um, you know, outside of rides. Yet, I think this was Disneyland's, um, I believe, I could just see them in a boardroom saying, hey, we have a fun place in California Adventure. Um, Universal has two of these parks. We need to make Toontown a little more kid friendly. And we have seen with the concept art and what they've talked about here is that they are going to uh, have like a little water section, like a little water park where mm -hmm. kids could run around um, a, you know, like a, a grassy, play, area, grassy area where people like the kids could climb and have some fun. So mm -hmm. it'll be kind of like that um, a little more because it is, I mean, you don't want it to be off-putting, right? Just like a random playground. You're like, this doesn't really fit in with the thing. So I think Disney's going to do it in a way where it just kind of really fits within Toontown. But super, super exciting that Disneyland uh, will finally have a place where kids can just go let off some steam. Uh, and hopefully there's a lot of shade for the parents as they sit down and mm -hmm. just watch their kids run around because that was super nice at Universal. Yeah, um, it was really nice. There yeah. was, I loved the, the one that was in the Jurassic Park area of universal it was so so cool my son loved it and then there was another one that was like kind of minion. in the minion yeah. area and he loved both of them and it was so nice to just kind of like sit in the shade and just relax for a little bit while he played and that's one thing with redwood creek challenge trail mm. you can't really like with a kid so our age at least it, it is so big everywhere. you do have to watch them like and it there's stuff they climb and stuff like it's kind of for little kids, but it's kind of like you still have to watch them closely. So it was yeah. nice that Universal had ones that were kind of geared towards younger childhood, ages. Yeah. So I hope that when Toontown reopens, it's kind of geared towards that a little bit more. So smart on Disney's end to make yeah. Toontown a I think it's going to be really cool. Then. I'm excited to see how that looks when it reopens, which is going to be in January. January, we let's know. go. Yeah. Very excited. Hopefully Cannot we'll go back wait. again not too long after and check it out. Yeah. Um, but one other thing that we noticed was in Universal, they had like a family center. Um, we only went to it once, but it was really nice. I thought it was a good area for whatever your needs are as a family or a parent. Um, it was inside a building, so it was like cooled down in there. There was like AC and stuff. There was like a family restroom which we used because sometimes we just both need to change our child's diaper together because it can so be a little crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's kind of our like revamp time. A lot of times we'll kind of, you know, change clothes or whatever in that area as well. So that was nice to have there. There was also just like quiet rooms in that area, which I think moms can nurse in there or it could be like, nap time or like whatever you want it to be i feel like they just said like quiet room there was like a, two or three of them and i just thought it was really well done i thought it was nice and i have not used the ones in disneyland i know there's like the it's called like baby care center right mm, i think so something like that in disneyland and 
I peeked in at it on this trip because I was curious how similar it would be to the one in Universal. And I didn't like use it. I just kind of like looked and I definitely could tell that it was like a little outdated, which maybe it's supposed to kind of have that feel because it's on Main Street and maybe it's supposed to feel kind of like old timey, whatever. But it felt like it could have just like used a little bit of updating to me. I do know that there's supposed to be one, I think, in California Adventure as well that might be a little bit more new, maybe a little more updated. I didn't actually find that one. I'm not sure where it is, but um, I liked the one in Universal a lot, so I was just kind of um, impressed by it, and I didn't, I didn't particularly care for the one in Disneyland, so one pro for universal <laughs> i feel yeah. like yeah and then the other pro that we had down here is kind of a, a random one uh based in the attractions but the tram tour i think is the the attraction that really kind of sets universal apart from disney if we want to look at it that way right they both have attractions and rides and everything um but the tram tour is actually taking you uh, on an adventure through real life movie sets, which mm -hmm. Disney doesn't have and Universal Orlando doesn't have because they don't film there, you know? Um, definitely a cool, it's like 45 minutes. It was but you really get to see long. Tons of stuff. Not only just movie sets that they've used in the past, but also they explain how special effects are used in movies and you learn so much. So it's like educational, but then also really, really cool. And so that is um, almost reminds me of like a jungle cruise, but real because there is a actual tour guide and everything. Um, mm -hmm. But that's the thing that really, I think sets apart universal from Disneyland when it comes to attractions, because you know, uh, they're always going to be trying to one up each other when it comes to rides. Mm -hmm. But this one, it's just so different from everything else yeah. because it is, you know, taking you to the real sets. Yeah, and so, it's very unique. Yeah, we overall, that concludes our pros. We're going to be talking about some cons here, but overall, really, really enjoyed our time in Universal. Mm -hmm. um, Disneyland's still our home park, so whenever we go yeah. down there, we're always going to go to Disneyland. Once uh, once the Mario uh, Nintendo World opens up, maybe we'll we'll probably go again to experience it because we we love uh, Mario Kart. We love oh, uh, yeah. finding each other oh, yeah. right there. Um, so favorite. we'll definitely uh, give it another go. Um, and plus, I know our son will want to go on the the pet ride again. Um, but as we jump into some cons, do you want to do you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. Um, so initially. Don't have a lot of thoughts on the food in Universal because we really only had one meal in the park. Um, and that was kind of on us because we ate, I think, I think we had breakfast before we left. Yeah. Um, so we didn't have breakfast in the park. We just had like salad wraps for lunch that we found. Um, we had a hard time like finding food, I feel like. And that could mm. be different if we knew the park better i'm sure we would know of more of the um the favorite places within the park to get food but we really didn't we kind of tried to like search some and there was uh i think at this point your sister and your parents were on the tram tour and your yeah. sister knows the park a little bit better than we do so we probably would have been able to get help from her if she had been with us but we had to kind of just figure it out <laughs> so we got just something random and it was like fine but when you're coming from Disney level yeah. of food and drinks, it was just like, cool. It's like a salad wrap. Like, yeah, it was like good. already pre-made, like, yeah. Grab and go stuff. And that was the only thing that we could find. Yeah. yeah. Which leads me to another point. We had tried to go to one other yeah. place. It was called Hollywood and Vine. Oh, um, dang. How did you I just that? remembered yeah. it because I don't know. I don't know why it came back to me. Yeah. This there was goes a reason to the whole thing of like, the operations could be run a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, which I think we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, when we were looking for food, we found this place. And I was like, oh, pizza sounds good. And we found one place that had pizza. And I knew, like, our son would love it, too. So we went to this place and, like, walked inside. And it was, like, empty. No workers. Like, so no workers. we literally walked into a vacant restaurant. And we could have just, like. Yeah, there was no one in there. The doors were unlocked. But there was no one inside. And I was like, I guess it's closed then. And like other people were trying to come so in behind weird. us and we we're like, there's no one in there. So just kind of weird 
run um food situations i feel like yeah. in universal although i feel like the food and wizarding world would be amazing yeah um, and the butter beer was did, amazing yeah, butter beer was great first time also another that. uh drink that uh of which we love so much is once you get down to like the jurassic world area oh, yeah. there's this place called island new bar instead of mm-hmm. island new yeah, i think it's called island new bar mm. uh the real one but this is island new bar um emphasis on bar and drinks um <laughs> it's like a tiki bar yeah, it was really cool it was just yeah it was like a grab and go tiki bar which was which yeah. was awesome i loved it wouldn't it. let me into the jurassic world playground with my drinks <laughs> that was lame um no that was gonna to be make climbing. sense if there's little kids in there but, um but. i was gonna give a couple of kids the drink i'm <laughs> uh, just joking um but no um that was really cool i love the island bar yeah thing. me too um, i thought that was such a cool aspect of that whole part of the park the, the downstairs part had more like vibier stuff yeah. than the upstairs yeah like. i yeah. really really like that whole area yeah i mean granted fun. harry potter's upstairs and that was, yeah that's cool that was awesome. i just like the overall vibe of the whole jurassic part of the park yeah same um here. Yeah, that bar was really fun. Yeah, and I wish we got. I wish we knew more food options. We went to City Walk after, and mm-hmm. um, it was just chaotic right after the park closed. It closed a little bit early, so we went down there, and it was it was a little thinner. It was a little more narrow than uh, downtown Disney, and so it was, it was cool just like to see, it, it was really cool. I liked the vibe. I really liked it, but it was, it was like crowded. we're not going to get any reservations here, and our son will go crazy. So we went back to the hotel and had a great yeah, meal had outside. a really really good awesome. meal. Um, hotel we stayed at the sheraton that's like right down the the street from universal and it was super super nice really so nice. really yeah. recommend that hotel and there's a restaurant as well there so we did get oh, yeah. to use that a few times so much fun so that was really fun so next up on our cons list we had okay we're not saying all the workers are bad yeah, yeah. Uh, we're not saying if you work there uh you're amazing you're great but we just we we saw it clear as day. I mean, there were some amazing, especially the character actors uh, in Universal, really went out of their way to um, to just kind of be a part of our lives. There was this one lady on stilts who was oh having gosh. so much fun with our son. Yeah, she was, there was like, like this cool interaction. And yeah. It was super oh, and cute. the um, the. Uh, the handlers for like Blue's uh, mm-hmm. sister, like the little baby dinosaur, yeah, and the other ones, great. The the cast members were great. When it came to like, um, just like staff at the the food places and stuff like that, we kind of noticed that it just kind of seemed more like a job, mm-hmm. um, kind of thing. Which which it is obviously a job, but at when Disneyland, you're used we had- to the Disney expectation with cast members at Disney. Anything less than that just feels like just a job. Like definitely a, yeah. just a job. We're so used to how amazing the Disneyland cast members are. And like I said, we had some great cast members at Universal, but there were a lot of times where we were just kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. Where like at you Disneyland just you just feel everyone. I mean, there was a couple of times where they just even made just a smile, in World like, of Disney in downtown Disney, we were just chatting with this guy. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, he was so nice. nice. We were chatting for like five or ten minutes about just whatever. And you can just nice tell dude. Disney cast members just want to be a part of your experience. Yeah. Whereas at Universal, maybe it's just more kind of like whatever. Just yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. hard It's hard to explain. So overall, <laughs> to wrap this whole conversation up, the theming of Universal was really good. I actually was... Really took you I was impressed. Yeah. yeah, I was really impressed with a lot of the detail that was put into a lot of it. Like the cues for... Well, the cues for a secret life pets. Yeah. That was awesome. That I was, was just so gonna cool. say that was the one that I was Harry like, man, Potter that I gotta do. Yeah, I didn't even see that one. Like World too. Yeah, everything. Was yeah, good. there was a lot of really good cues, a lot of really really good theming um, that I enjoyed. It's just, it's just different. As as a like Disney goer for the past fifteen years at this point, like you just. You just can tell the difference. 
And that could change whether you're like, if we had been, if we were regular universal goers, we would have had a strong connection mm-hmm. to the park. And yeah, we had such a great time and we'll definitely be back now that mm-hmm. that kind of like sparked our interest. Like it's, it's, re- it's really well done. I'm very, very thankful we went to it. Yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, I guess one thing that we were talking about and it kind of goes back to this is that we have a very strong connection, right? That, so that's a personal mm-hmm. thing that maybe people who just randomly haven't been to Disneyland for 10 years and then they go back, they're not going to have that connection. And even you said something too, where it's like, if you don't have a strong connection to the parks, and like let's say you haven't been in 10, 15 years, and then you go to this chaotic, crowded place and you have no idea where to go and like all this stuff, you might not have the best time. Yeah. Like we have a we know where everything is. We know how to navigate the parks very well and we have a great time. Yeah. So there are gonna be some times where people don't have uh ties to something and just like us with the Universal, like we had a fun time, but it wasn't as, you know, deep and meaningful as a Disneyland trip. Mm -hmm. But another thing that we talked about is kind of like the historical part of Disney, which was so great, is that when you're in Disneyland, you feel Walt Disney. You Mm -hmm. feel his uh his essence his spirit, and his his, yeah. his uh impressions that he left everywhere on the park where like in universal you're like oh it's a corporation that's that built this stuff like it's not one person it's like over the years you know Favorite it's a company like, but there's no one guy you know mm-hmm. where disneyland is like it's just one guy's vision to walt yeah. everything is and everything that. that's there is his inspiration yeah which you know as time goes on, I'm just praying that they keep all those things that really were like from him, you know, that he wanted yeah. there so much. Um, but yeah, there's so much Walt in the park and that's what sets it apart. I think is everyone that loves Disney and has that connection to it knows where it all came from and has that connection to Walt. Just, the firehouse with his light on like i mean that is just such a such a small thing but such a big thing at the same time um and there's just there's details there's so many details around the disneyland parks that hidden mickeys and just like random spots within the park that you know a specific historical thing happened there like it's just there's something so special about that yeah and just can't be replicated and that's fine because the universal was amazing too like we really really did enjoy it we just know now at this point like what universal is to us and what disneyland is to us yeah and i would love when we go to Walt disney world next to check out universal uh orlando Mm -hmm. because that's it i've heard it's really really cool i think the the biggest thing here is just appreciate i know there's this big thing between disney and universal and oh my gosh like universal's making the mario thing like is and there was with wizarding world oh my gosh there's wizarding world and then there's star wars land like how are they going to compete love what you love experience what you want to experience enjoy both of it Mm -hmm. i mean obviously disneyland just has such a bigger um impact in our lives um but that doesn't mean that you cannot enjoy things at universal and so Overall, such an amazing trip. If you if we said anything in this episode that you know you want to chat about, definitely feel free to DM us on Instagram or hit us up in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube. Um, mm-hmm. We just love this community that we have uh, been a part of and everyone that we've been able to talk to. And yeah. Um, and yeah, we're just so thankful for you. Next week we are going to be starting some Halloween themed episodes that we cannot wait to talk about but um, with that do you have any do you have any other closing thoughts i i think you hit it all i think we we pretty much talked about everything that um that we needed to very special trip we did get to end our trip on the mark twain which has become our tradition i'm so glad we got to do it this time it was such a good way to close out the night um such a special trip so very thankful that we got to do it and chat about it tonight and yeah universal was great too i'm really really glad that we got to do both for sure yeah and anyways thank you guys so much again for listening we love you all and we will see you guys next week see you next time bye bye